Do you know how to checkmate a lone king with a rook and king? After this lesson, you probably will. Thank you, Monica. In this lecture, we'll be learning how to checkmate a lone king with our own king and the rook. But first, I'm going to review a couple of principles that you should know already. As you can see, the black king is in the middle of the board, and it takes no less than nine squares to checkmate that king. We need to control all those nine squares for that king to be checkmated. And that's pretty hard when you only have a rook and the king. In fact, it's impossible. So this basically means that in order to checkmate a king, a lone king, we need to drive that king towards the edge of the board. Take a look at this position now. In order to checkmate the black king in the corner, it only takes four squares. And if the king is on the edge, a few more, just six. Here's an example. The black king has been driven to the edge of the board on d8. The white king controls all the escape squares, and all we need to do now is move our rook down, and the king is checkmated. Pretty simple. And this is pretty much the same thing, but this time the king is on a6. The white king controls all the escape squares, so we're just going to move our rook to a4. There we go. That's checkmate. Now, up until the 1970s, people checkmated the lone king with the rook and the king using a very old method. It, the problem with it is it's very slow. Take a look. We make sure the king doesn't cross that line, so we're going to advance our king towards the enemy king. Like this, like this. And now our rook is under attack, so we have to waste the tempo. We have to move the rook somewhere. King over here. And there you go. We wait till the two kings are opposite each other, and then we move the rook down. And here we go. We control this line, and we're going to do pretty much the same thing. Now we have to waste the tempo with the rook. So the king comes here. And now the king has no other move than to move here, because if the king moves back, then the rook is going to go down and you know make more progress. So the king goes over here. We move our rook over here, the king moves down, and it's pretty much the same thing again. Now we waste the temple with the rook. And here we go. Pretty much the same thing. And finally, the rook comes down and delivers checkmate. As I said, um, the problem with this method, it's very slow. It has taken white no less than 27 moves to check my black king. And that's a lot of moves. Now, I'm going to teach you the new method. It's called the cage. And basically, what we do is we move our rook in such a way that the king, is, the enemy king, is caged in. It's, it's like in a box, like that. Take a look at that. So you can see the king has only got those squares to move to. We move over here, because if the king moves over here, we make the cage even smaller. So the king is going to move over here. And if we can't make the cage smaller, what we do is we move our own king towards the enemy king, like that. Take a look at that. We've taken away those two squares here. So the cage is a little bit smaller now. And now another check. Now watch out because this move is not so good. We do make the cage a little bit smaller, but then the king goes over here and white doesn't have many useful moves here. He's gonna to have to waste the tempo. That's why this move is much better. Now there's no danger of the black king running away like this because now all we need to do is move our rook like this. The king is gonna move over here and then we have checkmate. So back here. We deliver this check, the king moves over here, and now the cage is smaller, so we keep moving our king forward. Now, if the king had gone over here, again, we don't move our king to c3, because then he moves over here, and we don't have a useful move. What we do is move, we move our king over here instead. Then king to c3, and then we've got pretty much the same thing. If the king moves over here, we make the cage smaller. If the king moves over here, Again, we move forward. So, back to this, king to c3, king here, 
If we move forward, can hear another check. If the key moves over here, we just waste the tempo with the rook to any of those move, any of those squares. And if the king goes to a4, then the rook comes down and delivers checkmate. So king here, king here, again, and then just a little weighty move like this. This is a zugzwan position. The king has to move and then rook down.